Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. Before we even get started with this video, let me do a shameless plug for myself. We've got new hoodies, new long sleeves, a couple of new designs, all on www.shoplifetv.com. We'd really appreciate it if you guys would support us by purchasing any of these, but that's all up to you. Anyways, we also have a section on the website where you can ask any questions that you guys have as well, or do appointment requests for any performance or any big build kind of appointment request. So all that stuff is on the website. Once again, that's www.shoplifetv.com. Now let's get on with this video. Today's video, we're working on this X5 3.0, which has an issue with it just stalling out randomly. This is a manual transmission car, but this issue can also apply to automatic transmission cars as well. This engine is the M54 B30, but it also applies to M54 B25, even the M52s. So any car that has that engine, this should help out with that. So the issues we're having here is it just stalls out randomly. Uh, you could just be at a traffic light right before you're about to go, it'll just stall out. And the reason that happens is usually because of the camshaft position, position sensor. So you've got two camshaft position sensors on, these, on this engine, one exhaust, one intake. It's always good to replace both. Um, sometimes you will even throw a check engine light with a P0340 code, which can determine which sensor is bad. There's also other P0344 and a couple of other codes that can point to the camshaft sensor. But I always recommend if you are getting a cam sensor code, it's a good idea to replace both of them and always stick with original genuine parts uh, when it comes to these sensors because you don't want to do the job twice. And the genuine sensors are not that much more expensive than the aftermarket ones for this. So let me show you what the sensors look like, where they're located, and then we can get on with the DIY. So this is the intake cam sensor, and this is the exhaust. Now sometimes they do not come with the O-rings. This one actually came with O-ring from factory. This one didn't, so I had to purchase a separate O-ring. So we went ahead and put that on. That's why this one is black and this one is green. But you do want to replace the O-rings whenever you're changing these sensors out. We're going to start off by removing this air duct and also the air box. If you have a different series car, so like a 3 series or a 5 series, this process is going to vary a little bit, but it's pretty straightforward. You're just going to have these push pins. Take those out, then there's gonna be a couple of bolts holding the air box in place, and as well as an intake boot or something attaching to the mass airflow sensor. So let's pull all this off. We're going to disconnect the mass airflow sensor. You've got this pin that you just push down. If you have a newer style MAF, it doesn't have a pin, you just have to pull it out. Now you can use a flathead screwdriver or a 6 millimeter socket to loosen this clamp up. And then the air box is usually held in with two 10 millimeter bolts. Separate the intake boot from the mass airflow sensor. Then lift the air box out. Now depending on the car that you're working on, your intake boot might not be in the way. But it's a good idea to remove it, that way we have access to the connector for the intake cam position sensor. So in order to remove the intake boot, you're going to have another 6 millimeter clamp, which you can use a flat head or a 6 millimeter socket to loosen and then pull off. Now at the bottom of this box, you can see this silver clip. Now when you push the clip in, you can pull the connector out. Now that wire runs from underneath the intake manifold, it runs up behind this, and it plugs in right underneath here. So we are going to remove this solenoid that attaches to the, val the vanos. Before we can do that, we're going to have to disconnect this breather hose. So just push the two 
sides like that, that way the clips release, and then you can pull this out. And now we're also gonna disconnect the solenoid, tell them with another clip, push the clip in, and the connector slides out. So push it in and pull it out. Now you're gonna to wanna to stuff some shop towels or microfiber underneath this area because some oil will spill out. And then you're gonna use your fan clutch wrench or a 32 millimeter wrench to loosen this. So just get it on there and just turn it counterclockwise. You just pull it up and out of the way. And now you can see the sensor right here. There's a couple of ways that you can remove this five millimeter hex bolt. You can use an Allen wrench like this. It is a five millimeter hex, you could use a bit. Another way you could do is you can remove this oil filter cap and when you remove the oil filter cap, you can just use an extended uh, five millimeter hex socket and that will also do it. But the main thing you wanna do is make sure whatever you're using is completely seated inside of that bolt because you do not wanna strip that. If you strip it, then you have to drill it out. It's gonna be a big headache. So go ahead and get whatever you're using, get it, make sure it's nice and set in there and then you can loosen it. Now when you're doing this and you're moving around this breather hose, make sure you don't break it, especially if yours is old. This one we just replaced, so it's not a big deal. Let's turn it counterclockwise. There's a little bit of Loctite on there from factory, so it might be a little bit hard. The main reason I'm not removing this oil filter cap we just replaced it and just did the oil change and I don't want to replace that o-ring right now with the new filter. To remove the sensor, you might want to twist it around a little bit so you break the seal. And you just wiggle it out. And just fish this wire through. And now you can see the O-ring that was on here is stuck inside, so we need to pull that out. Now here's a new sensor. We're gonna fish the wire back through. Oh damn, boy, better hide those elbows. What? They actually, I told you. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it in. I've got oil already on this O-ring, so I looped it up. So then we can just push it in place. Now we're just gonna push it until it bottoms out against the head. And then you can actually twist it to line up the bolt hole. And you wanna make sure that you are threading it in properly. The first few threads should go in by hand and then it'll start getting tougher once that Loctite comes into play. And now you just tighten that up and then we'll continue on.
We've got the bolt nice and tight. Now we can put the vanos solenoid back in. With the bolt tight, we can screw the vanos solenoid back in place. And this is just clockwise. Once you have it hand tight, then you can use your fan clutch tool to tighten it the rest of the way. With it tight, we can plug the connector back in. You should hear it click. And the last thing we have to do is put the breather hose back on the valve cover. And you should hear two clicks, one for each tap. Now you can just put the air box, the intake boot, all that stuff back together. But we are, we are also gonna be replacing the exhaust cam sensor, which is up here in the front. So the exhaust cam sensor is right here. You can see this plug that goes to it. Now, depending on your car, you might have the fan shroud in the way. And if you do, you will have to remove your fan shroud. So you can go look at any of our cooling system videos for that. For us on this X5, we have enough space to take it out. So we're gonna release the connector first. There's two tabs, one on each side. So you wanna squeeze those two tabs together and you can wiggle the whole connector off of the actual cam sensor. There's, a one, there's one tab on this side, one tab on this side. I'm gonna squeeze the two together. And this one is also held in with a five millimeter hex. This is gonna be hard to see, but it's at the bottom. And you wanna make sure that you have your hex socket in the bolt completely. And it's the same thing, you wanna twist the sensor so you can break the seal and then you pull it out. And don't forget the O-ring. We've got this O-ring lubed up as well. And let's put it on. So you might have to feel for the hole a little bit. <laughs> okay, and once you have it stuck in, then just play around with it a little bit until it goes all the way in. <laughs> you might have to twist and turn a little bit too and you will feel it bottom out. Some more lube on. Once it bottoms out, then you just wanna twist and turn the sensor until you can get the bolt in the hole. And you, once again, you wanna hand thread this first Last thing you want to do is plug the connector in. All right, so that's it for this DIY. You might have to clear your codes after you've done this, but usually if you were having codes for that cam sensor, within two off and on cycles, the code should clear itself. Um, besides that, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Just put your intake boot and your air box, all that stuff back together, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in our next video.